As defensive linemen have gotten bigger, stronger, faster, have developed new techniques, counters, approaches, offensive linemen have struggled to keep up. The number of quality O-linemen has steadily declined in the last decade, mainly because practice time has been limited, which makes it harder to develop, which is why it's critical to hit on the right big man come draft day. At the top of everybody's board is Joe Alt and Troy Fatanu, one freakish behemoth, the other an athletic scrapper, and today we'll dive into the film to discover which of the two is better. Alt's main advantage is that he is 6'8", and he is impossible to miss on tape. For one, it's because he is freaking massive, and two, he has the smoothest footwork in the class. Typically, massive dudes have trouble not looking like big boxes of cardboard, but his footwork is as fluid as anybody you'll see at really any size and position. He is the prototypical top-tier tackle prospect with power, balance, foot speed, versatility. He's great in the run game, good in the pass game. There is everything to like on his tape. My favorite part of his game is that footwork, just so incredibly smooth. What I like is that he can win with just footwork alone to cover up a defender. When TJ Parker uses almost like a wide receiver move where he fakes out, in, back out, this is really supposed to look like speed to power where he's pretending like he's taking the edge to widen all outside, then he'll run straight through him with power once he's off balance, but he's actually adding another wrinkle to it by trying to use speed outside. It's really a move that would freeze up any big man who can't move his feet quick enough. The goal is to paralyze Alt in place after he tries to anchor down to stop power, but Alt just dances with him and shows that he can mirror any move that's up, down, lefts, or right. We're gonna talk more about his hand placement in a bit, but just focusing on his feet, shout out Rex Ryan. Even when his hands get countered, he's able to keep his feet alive where he can stay in front of these athletic pass rushing freaks. And when his hands do get countered, and they will, he's able to maintain balance and stay in front of his man. When he's landing his punch and he's using sound technique, his power is simply unbelievable to watch. Watch him drive Savion Jackson backwards, harnessing his power from the ground up, where he's accessing all the power from his feet to his butt up through his arms and hands. He looks practically unstoppable. When he stays low with good pad leverage, using his massive 6'8 frame, this is not something anybody wants any part of. He can handle stunts really nicely too. Both guys can actually. A stunt is basically two pass rushers switching rush lanes, where JT to Amalu rushes inside to try to get Alt to follow him, so that Tyleek Williams can loop around outside free. But watch Alt. He has such a natural feel for these stunts, twists, and games, he literally delivers to Amalu to his guard next to him, almost waits till he's secured, then easily swivels outside for Williams. His natural instincts for the game prove he's not just a massive body, he is actually processing the game and is understanding how defenses are trying to attack him. In the run game, he can both pull out in front of the running back and win in space, and he can also pin defenders inside on pin and pull. An additional element of his game, which in my opinion shouldn't go overlooked, is that he can do all of this from the right side as well, which is harder than you'd think. They are completely different mechanics, you're visioning the game through your other eye. His versatility to play both sides of the line shows how good he is at processing what is happening. The one area that concerns me though, is that his hand placement can be spotty, he has a tendency to reach when he throws his punch. When a lineman's head gets over his feet, he gives up his balance and exposes himself to a counter if he misses. If he doesn't land his punch, he's leaning his weight into you, so if you can get out of the way or counter his hands, he's not in balance, so he can't readjust, re-anchor, or find a counter of his own. Too often, Alt is leaning into his punch, limiting his odds of winning the rep. You can see him dipping his head down and leaning into Tirali Price. Instead of striking Price using his lower half, his butt, hips, and arms to push up into him, he's leaning into him with his top half, which limits his balance. If Price counters in any way, like here not striking Alt head on but trying to fill the B gap, then when he feels Alt leaning on him, he can use his momentum against him and throw him around like a ragdoll, then Alt's tendency to lean into defenders can get him into serious trouble. When he's leaning with his top half instead of his feet and bottom half, he of course ends up playing off balance, which remember is one of his biggest strengths, and then his biggest strength goes out the window. 
However, what I do like about his film is that against Clemson in one of his later games in the year, he seemed to fix everything. He lowered his pad leverage. He got his hands into a better position to lift up on defenders instead of into them. Lifting up on them neutralizes their strength. He also used the hug technique, where he's literally hugging the outside of the pass rusher's shoulder pads. In my opinion, this technique keeps him from reaching since he doesn't have to get inside the pads of the pass rusher. Now he can latch onto the outside, then watch how his butt can absorb all the power of the rush. His improvement here has me fired up for what's to come, and when compared to Fatanu, who is completely different, you can really see where each lineman shines. But before we get into T-Fouts, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Rocket Money. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower your bills, manage your money better, build a custom budget, grow your savings all in one single place. It has a ton of awesome features like uploading a photo of your bills where Rocket Money can negotiate your bills for you. It can analyze your spending habits to create a custom budget that works with your lifestyle. It can even monitor your spending by category. And my favorite part of it, it can cancel your Levy on Bell only fan subscription when you inevitably leave it on auto pay. Seriously, how many times do you go and check your account statement and see that you're getting billed 10 to $20 for something you forgot about months ago? That's helped me save, realizing how much I'm using Uber Eats while editing and watching film helped me chop off some of my expenses too. If you want to start saving more money and canceling those annoying extra subscriptions, go to rocketmoney.com slash Alex Rollins or click the link in the description to get started for free. That's rocketmoney.com slash Alex Rollins. If Joe Alt is yin, Troy Fautanu is yang. He's not the Hulk that Alt is. His 6'3 height is in just the third percentile, and he wins in completely different ways. My report on him reads crafty, scrapper. Because he's smaller and is going against guys much bigger than him, he has to find other ways to win, and he more than does. His technique is better than Alt's. You're not going to see him leaning, his hand placement is better. You can see him in a good upright position with his butt dipped, he's not falling forward and his hands are placed independently, one high, one low. So when Ethan Burke tries to slip back inside, Fautanu spins the wheel, where he literally shifts his hands like driving a car to take care of the inside rush. In fact, his hand placement and technique are advanced to where he's routinely striking with hyper-precision to knock you off balance. The points of control to contact for an offensive lineman are the wrist, elbow, or back of the shoulders. Watch out Fautanu finds the elbow and can literally strike it down to throw the pass rusher off balance. He lures you into traps during the down, where he's going to throw five different things at you, and before you know it, you've got rubber pellets flying up into your face mask. Immediately, Justice Finkley thinks he's going to throw his hands first, so he tries a quick counter. Nothing there. Then Fautanu quickly counters with his hand into his shoulder pad, so now Finkley tries to outreach him since he knows Fautanu isn't the longest ever. But seeing his arm extended, Fautanu uses that crazy precise hand placement to release off of Finkley, which is not normal when engaged, quickly finds that shoulder pad and yanks him to the ground. You'll see him mix up his sets to attack pass rushers too. A jump set is a quicker set where you're trying to get on the rusher immediately, usually for quick game, quick passes. And then vertical sets are more for longer developing plays where you're going to drop deeper to siphon off the edge and secure the pocket. He fires off like he's jump setting so Burke thinks his hands are coming. Nope. Then he hits him with his hands, he gets countered, but in that moment he sees Burke is extended and knocks his ass down. His mixing up tempos is my favorite part of his game. Sometimes he'll take his first step back to show the rusher he's vertical setting, but then jump sets him, completely neutralizes him. Cause mixing tempos affects the way the rusher is attacking during the down since they're reading you just like you're reading them. Just like Alt, he's really good against stunts too, very natural at picking up what defenses are trying to do before and after the snap. And when studying him, you can tell he's really, really smart, like rare processing ability for an offensive lineman. Here Texas has six potential pass rushers, and Washington has five blockers with their receiver in the backfield. Typically, Fautanu is the end in pass protection, but he also knows if all six come, he has to squeeze inside so the furthest rusher from the QB comes free to give Penix the most time possible since you don't want the guy closest flying in unblocked. He sees Anthony Hill take a little step forward before the snap. He's processing the potential blitz. 
So while he's dropping, look at his helmet stripe, he's looking at Hill. He tries to shove his guard over to take care of the blitzing Hill to squeeze everybody inside, and his processing ability pays off because Texas doesn't end up blitzing the entire line. The only real issue with him is that he's just… small. He's crafty, as we've seen, he is very skilled, but he just doesn't play very big and can get pushed around at times, especially by bigger defensive linemen. When pass rushers get inside his pads, it's difficult for him because he doesn't have that same power that Alt does. And while he can throw a million different tricks at you with his hands, with his different jump sets, at the end of the day, he's just not going to drive you backwards and kick your ass. If I'm deciding who my OT1 is, it's no surprise Joe Alt, and it's without a doubt. He has that rare, rare body type that you just don't find. There aren't a lot of true linemen with his size out there in the world. And then there is some technical refinement, and even in-season development, that pops out on tape that shows he has the skill and wins in different ways. His athleticism, paired with his skill, paired with his elite measurables, shows me that he can already be good day one, and that he has that Hall of Fame ceiling that he can grow into. Whereas with Fautanu, I think he's more skilled than Alt, but the lack of power he plays with worries me and makes me want to take him a little later in the first round. These days, seeing as how many different teams are in search of quality offensive linemen, the first round big man evaluation will be crucial to nail. For every team picking in the top 10 who is sitting down to grind out the film on Joe Alt and Troy Fautanu, everything is crystallized, we have a monster at the top, don't overthink it, take the dude. This